I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teachers of the Year profile. We're speaking with Karen Lack, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. For and congratulations. Me. Thank you. So tell us about yourself. Tell us where you teach and what you teach. Um, I am an English learner instructional specialist and I work for San Juan Unified Schools. I teach at two K through eight sites, both Lycan and Woodside. And um, what I do as a specialist is I advocate for the needs. I have 200 ELL students that I advocate the needs for. And um, I do testing, formative and summative um, assessments. And I make sure that they are um, meeting their ELD standards. And I support them, giving them targeted instruction. And I also support teachers by providing professional development throughout the district um, through grade level collaborations um, um, at the school sites. And I push into classrooms. Um, I also conduct um, parent meetings. Um, we have elect meetings that we do four times a year. And I do some parent training through there. And I collaborate with all the other support um, personnel. So uh, tell me how you feel, obviously there's value in what you do, but the demand for it, the need for, you know, teaching English learners, especially in our region. Yeah, just, well, nationally, in our, in our school site, we have around 4,000 ELL students and um, in our county and in our state, we have a very huge population of ELL students. And um, I want to advocate for them so that um, right now there's an achievement gap and many schools are um, struggling to meet their needs. So my job is to support teachers so that they can um, differentiate that instruction and have access to, access to content so that they can be successful um, in their grade level standards. What kind of a breakthrough do you see with students when you've been working with them for a while and they finally mm -hmm. start mm -hmm. getting it? What's it like? Um, well, it's very exciting to see students be successful. And um, what I do is I break down the instruction. So it's, um, it's through formative assessments that they can see their success. For example, if um, they're reading, I find out what their reading level is. And um, through um, support of reading and reading at their grade level and also using uh, resources that provide um, audio and visual and um, tools that can um, support them to, to the con for access to content. It's really exciting to see them make growth. They see the growth because on the next formative assessment, you know, they see, they see the growth they made. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very exciting for them because um, oftentimes on our large um, assessments like the CST, for example, they don't see that growth right away. So throughout the year, they're very encouraged um, through the formative assessments. And uh, what kind of an impact does that have on their families as well? The families are very supportive. Many of our ELL, you know, families are here because they want what's best for their children and they mm -hmm. want their children to have success and have many um, economic opportunities. So the parents are very excited to watch their children learn English and be bilingual because we know that, you know, it's wonderful to, to have to know two languages, three languages. Um, so parents are very excited to see their children um, grow and be successful in learning English. So in doing that, you have a pretty good connection with the families, do you feel? Absolutely. And when you and get buy-in from the families, mm -hmm. that helps. Um, part of my job is to have a very strong um, school to home connection and we do that through um, parent meetings, regular parent meetings. I do parent training so that um, parents feel um, that they know how to access the school. Um, you know, I train them on the computer, on iPads so that they can um, know how to go and access, for example, we have Zangle in our district so they can see their grades, but also that they can see all the different resources that can help their children learn different reading programs, different interactive websites, different apps on iPads. So it is um, very exciting to get the parents involved. We had, um, at one of my schools, I piloted a DVD lending library. And so parents were coming once a week and checking out DVDs to learn English. And what was happening is their child was also watching with them. And so again, the child and parent were learning English together. And then the parent would come back the following week and we could have just a very casual conversation you know, about their child and about their successes. Mm. So parent contact is crucial. What do you think are some of the biggest challenges that you face 
uh, in what you do for the mm -hmm. district? Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge is really time. Um, teachers, our classroom teachers are on the front line. They're extremely busy. They work very, very hard. They're meeting with students before school, often during their lunch break, often after school, you know, any time they can to support teachers. Mm -hmm. And I also want to meet with them and support them. And sometimes that's difficult to find that um, time where we can have a good um, collegiate conversation. So um, one thing I did at one of my sites is I created what was called the Balanced Literacy Cafe. And so using a team approach, I had classrooms. I visited the classroom. I, the teach, rather, the classrooms visited me in my classroom. And um, I had groups set up that were rotation, so it was a team teaching approach, so I could demonstrate some of the different ELL strategies that teachers could do, more a hands-on learning approach. So it was part of their normal day, and they got to be in a basically a learning lab, and that teacher and I worked together to provide academic discourse. We um, had a group that used iPads and different apps to support um, the shared reading program that I was doing. So I also demonstrated shared reading strategies. Mm -hmm. So that was a really, yeah. um, just a good way to do it was with during the class day. And then at the end of our time, I always had a reflection piece so the students could reflect on their learning. And that was a formative assessment for both the other teacher and I together. We could hear how they felt about their learning. So what inspired you to become a teacher in the first place? How did you get here? Um, I was not thinking about being a teacher when I was in college. Um, I really wanted to go into um, the psychology or nutrition. I always wanted to work with people in some way. But one of my classes was a cross-cultural class and I needed to observe a teacher. And she was um, vibrant, dynamic, and she was an adult education teacher teaching ESL. Students worked 10 hours a day and they would come to her class in the evening and they were so excited to learn, even though they were exhausted. And I watched her, and it wasn't because she made learning relevant. She gave them a voice that they didn't have during their workday. And they thrived because they were learning English. She was teaching life skills, so it was very practical. And through life skills, they were getting the form and functions of language. And I saw that, and it was just exciting. Every day was different. And so I became an instructional assistant in her classroom, and she mm -hmm. mentored me. And from there, I went and got my adult education credential, taught that for several years. I loved working with um, different cultures. I speak Spanish. Um, my family, um, my parents are from other countries. So it was just a natural fit for me. And um, I went into bilingual teaching. That was my mm -hmm. first um, job. And um, I worked that as a fourth grade bilingual teacher for several years, and then moved up here to Sacramento. and. Um, now I'm an English learner specialist. So this teacher that you mentioned that you that you observed initially, that just came out of nowhere. It your inspiration did. came from nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Always be ready for yeah. you know an opportunity. You never know and seize the moment. She was um, it really having a mentor makes all the difference. And seeing learning in action, demonstration action, it wasn't anything I read. It was learning by doing. So what would you say to somebody who's considering education as a career? Um, it's a real exciting career. No two dates are the same. Um, it's extremely challenging. You have to love not just working with kids. You need to learn, love working with all people because you work with adults. You collaborate with other teachers, administrators, support people. And you need to love other, you know, their parents. You need to find strength from the parents and communicate well to parents. Um, and you need to be a lifelong learner. You have to continuously um, challenge yourself. As we're challenging our students to be 21st century learners, know critical thinking skills, know how to integrate technology, apply technology. As teachers, we need to know how to do that ourselves. So continuously learning how to do that. So. And it's not for everyone. No, it's not for everyone. It's hard work, mm -hmm. and um, it's you're tired at the end of the day, but it's worth it, and it's very rewarding. And what's it feel like to be named a Teacher of the Year? Well, it's it's an incredible honor. It's an honor to represent exceptional teachers at San Juan Unified. I work with amazing teachers, and it's nothing I do that makes me Teacher of the Year. It's what we do together, and that's what makes our programs great. Well, we're, we're grateful for your time. Thank you for mm -hmm. joining us. We mm -hmm. really appreciate it. We've been speaking with Karen Lack, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks right. for joining Thank us. Thank you very much.